Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for part three of our COVID series. This is our final video, and this is gonna be about baby Jordan and all that we had to go through with his birth story being a premature baby. He was born at 33 weeks due to the fact that I got COVID. I was getting shortness of breath. I was intubated and they had to deliver him emergency by emergency C-section. To make matters worse from what we're all going through, um, when I called the hospital, uh, they didn't want to give me any information at all about Jordan because I didn't have the bracelet with the, um, whatever you call it, the, you know, the number that they use to track the parent to the child. Um, and of course, the reason why is because I was home, I was sick, COVID, everything that was happening. I wasn't in the hospital like I normally would had he had it been a normal birth. So I didn't have the bracelet um, and they didn't want to give me information. So they said I literally had to go drive to the hospital, get the bracelet. So I had the number before they can give me any information. Um, and so I talked to my sister-in-law. We decided, you know what, that's that's not right. I called ICU. They said, okay, here's, here's a number you can, um, you know, here's your parent number that you need because um, I, I think that you deserve to know some information about your child. So thankfully, uh, thanks to God, they gave me that information. I was able to call um, and get through and actually ask questions about how he was doing. And because Danielle, uh, what I learned was because Danielle was intubated and sedated, so was the baby. Um, so was Jordan when he came out. Um, and so they had to intubate him as well uh, and sedate him only for a short time. He was doing really well. Um, well after they took that off of him, they put the CPAP um, just to kind of wean him off and get him to breathe on his own. Um, but he was just doing really well, uh, thank God, um, you know, as far as the circumstances goes. And uh, what was interesting is, is that um, since Danielle had COVID, um, he had to be isolated in his own room uh, because there's a possibility that COVID could pass through from the mother to the baby. Yeah. Uh, and so they had to test him twice. They needed two negative results before bringing him out with the rest of the babies. Um, and so I actually um, got to visit him. Well, actually before I visited him, uh, I actually got to, to do Zoom calls. I know we mentioned Skype calls earlier. It was actually Zoom calls to make a correction there, but um, I got to do Zoom calls with him, and that was the only way that I could see him at first um, because they pretty much had all sorts of different protocols. Like every doctor or nurse I spoke to told me different things up to like as far as me being able to see the baby in person because I had COVID, I was positive. Um, and of course, I didn't want to pass that on to the baby. But by then, my symptoms, I should have been already, um, what was it called? Already not contagious, sorry. <laughs> Already not contagious. And um, so I had to ask several different nurses, several different questions until finally um, they were able to give me the green light that I could see Jordan at the hospital. Um, and so when I did visit him, I had to dress up and everything, mask, gown, and go into his isolated room with one nurse and see him in the NICU. I don't remember you telling me that. <laughs> wow. But that's great. That's good. You know, I'm glad. Yes. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> We're still finding what? things out about this. <laughs> and uh, so I went into the room and saw him. I took pictures. I was able to uh, do a, a Zoom call with my... Uh, sister-in-law and my sister just I just sent a quick little invite to whoever was available at that time it was totally random I just sent out like hey if you're available jump in here's Jordan <laughs> um, and so it was just really cool to see him for the first time because uh, as as Danielle said this is definitely a very different delivery story um, and so seeing him was very very exciting um, and you know just knowing that he was real he's there um, yeah. And of course, it was sad to see him, you know, in his incubator. Um, but he was just so cute. Uh, I just remember immediately falling in love. Um, at the same time, it was so different because we weren't together. You know, we didn't have that 
that moment as far as me and Danielle having that moment together with, with Jordan. It was just yeah. me and it was just really, really weird. Very different compared to when uh, we had our first son. Um, and of course, I was preoccupied about Danielle's well-being um, on top of Jordan uh, and how he was doing on a daily basis. But thankfully the hospital, um, they did daily calls. I forget what they were called, do you remember? No. Uh, but uh, they would call and Round pretty us. much, yeah, something like that. <laughs> they would call and just pretty much give a short um, update on how he's doing, mm -hmm. you know, different areas of what they're looking for and uh, talking about what their specific goals were for him on a daily basis, whether he's meeting it or not, and what he needs to get there. So it was really cool to be on that call. Eventually, Danielle, uh, when she was strong enough, was able to join those calls as well. Yeah, it was very very surreal to see my baby for the first time i i still hadn't been able to go visit him but just to see him i was crying we will insert a picture <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was just so amazing to know like that was my child because like he said i didn't get that skin to skin moment so it was really beautiful yeah and even though i got to see jordan uh, in real life at the hospital, finally. Um, I was really hesitant to hold him. Uh, the nurse was actually really surprised. She's like, you don't wanna hold your baby? <laughs> and I'm like, I do wanna hold him, but I'm gonna hold off for now just because even though doctors say I'm not contagious, like I just wanna keep my baby safe. Yeah. Um, and I just wanna take every precaution necessary to, to make sure that I don't keep him here longer unnecessarily because he got COVID from me for whatever reason, um, because we just don't know. Um, but I waited, I waited quite, I don't even know how much time, but um, you know, there was at least at least two or three times that I visited him that I, I did not hold him. And uh, finally I did, and it was just so nice to, to hold him. He was just so tiny, um, you know, and I just never held a baby that small before. After I got discharged, I was finally able to see my son, my second beautiful son. I hadn't actually seen him in person yet, so I was very nervous. And I was weak too from still getting out of the hospital and getting over COVID. Uh, it was it was an exciting, nerve-wracking feeling to like meet this little person, even though he'd been living in my stomach the whole time. like it's so weird like it's different compared to having a baby and you being there for it like even though i was there for it you know i was out so i don't remember anything i don't know anything so i uh, went to go see him and he was so tiny when i saw him i just started crying and he was already 11 days old when i finally got to see him in person the staff was amazing. The doctors, all the nurses, like anybody that was there to help was just so kind and helpful. It just, it made us feel okay to leave our child there, mm -hmm. especially for me because I wanted to see him every day, but I also needed to just rest. Mm -hmm. I was still extremely weak and trying to recover from all that I had been through. Um, they were just really amazing. When we did go see him, we always tried to be there for care time, which is when they change his diaper, check his temperature, feed him. Feed him. Uh, we tried feeding him. That was really great. Uh, he didn't always take, but just to hold him. Speaking of that, when I held him for the first time, we both held him. It was, he was so tiny. I just couldn't control my emotions and started crying. Like once I held him, I was hooked. And then I really wanted to go every day. Like I had to see him. I was like begging him. He's like, no, you need to rest. And he, he was so little that I was really intimidated to even yeah. like do much with him. Like he just seemed so fragile. Um, that changing his diaper was quite the task. Uh, and I refused to change his clothes. I'm like, babe, you can do that because I don't want to do anything bad or like 
drop his oxygen level he was or something extremely, crazy. Yeah, he was, and, and sometimes that would happen because you were doing something, his oxygen would drop or like just one of the things would start tripping and the nurse has always told us, you don't want to focus on that. Just make sure that he looks okay, that he's not turning blue, like his mm -hmm. color is good because you don't get to take home the monitor with you when he goes home. So Jordan just kept doing really good. He was getting stronger every day. They eventually removed the oxygen tube and he was able to just breathe on his own. And that was a huge deal. Eventually he became what they call a feed and grow preemie, meaning he just had to work on feeding through a bottle since they were doing a gavage feed where a machine feeds him through his feeding tube at the time that was placed and gaining weight because he got really, he, he was born really small, but you know how they eventually lose a little bit of weight. So we were trying to get his weight back up. He still came home, like, what was he when he came home? Like five something? Mm -hmm. He was really tiny, like very, he was so tiny in his car seat. We will try to insert a picture there for you guys. Um, but yeah, he, and then he eventually got the feeding tube taken out and that was a huge deal too because that means like we were that much closer to to bringing him, bringing home. him home yeah and we were so excited every step that that he conquered we just got more and more excited and then you know i do want to mention that i totally recommend getting a small but mighty nicu journal one of our friends that also have um a NICU baby, they got one of these and it just helps you really remember things. It has the date, the gestational age, weight, the NICU day number. This is a journal area for you to write in. We would write in it every day. It has a little bubble here for questions. And then today I'm grateful for, and that was always really fun to, to fill out. And I will be including a link to for anybody who wants to purchase the Small But Mighty NICU journal, even if it's for a gift or because you're a parent, a new parent of a preemie. It's a really great book to have. One of the days that we came to visit Jordan, it was really exciting because we had learned that he had graduated from a incubator to an open crib. And the reason for that is, is they want to see if he can carry his body temperature through the night and he did and if he hadn't he would have had to go back into an incubator so another check off the list so we we're really excited and proud of him and it was just really cool to see him in a normal little crib like when they place the baby next to you after you have one having a premature child uh, we learned that they need a special formula um, it's called neosure um, it is a a uh, product of Similac, well, both Similac and what's the other? Infamil. Infamil mm -hmm. uh, have their own version of it. Um, but he's actually still, he's he's four months now, and he's actually still on that formula. And the reason for the formula is that it gives him uh, additional nutrients uh, and helps him to gain weight quicker uh, to help him catch up, um, you know, yeah. all the, the months that he missed um, being inside. The womb. Well, on the subject of feeding, because I was in the hospital and everything that I went through, the trauma of it all, and not being able to see my child for 11 days, I was unable to produce any kind of milk. And thankfully, the hospital has donor milk. And to me, that just meant so much because breast milk is so important for your child. If I mean, I would be feeding him right now if I could. It's, I don't mean like right now. Why did you laugh? <laughs> okay, we'll we can start keep that it over. Right? No, <laughs> you laughed. So due to the lack of me not being able to produce breast milk, it was really important for Jordan to get the donor breast milk as well as the NeoSure, just so that he can grow and become really strong for that exit day. As I said in part one, the day that we found out Jordan was coming home, we were actually in the emergency room because I ended up with a blood clot due to the pick line that they put in my arm. I remember sitting there nervously waiting 
both of us waiting there. He was actually able to go with me this time. It was so amazing. And um, I was just so happy that he was able to be there with me. Me too. Um, when they called, I had answered. They actually called me. Normally they call him. So it was really special. Um, they, the, I talked to the doctor. He was just saying, um, how are you? And Jordan's doing great. Gave me the, the rounds um, of how he was doing. And then... He had mentioned, so um, I think you need to go get a car seat because your son's going home tomorrow. <laughs> and I just started crying because like, I really needed that information in that moment. Like that was some good news. It was a blessing to receive. And you better believe once we got out of that hospital, we went and got that car seat. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. And we also picked up formula. <laughs> Even though we got the wonderful news of Jordan being able to come home the next day, there was still a few things they needed us to do. The first one was that we needed to make an appointment with his pediatrician for about two days after his discharge date, just to make sure that he was still doing good under our care. And the next one was we had to do CPR, which was watching a video in the room and having us practice on the little fake babies. And the next one or last thing was his car seat test. The reason for the car seat test is to make sure that he can keep his oxygen while sitting in that position for a long period of time. I think they had it, him do it for like, what, an hour? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, he passed, it was great. And we actually didn't even find out until the day. So like, we were kind of nervous. We weren't even sure if he was actually gonna be able to come home. So it was a huge blessing. And after all that, we got to bring him home. And that was so, so awesome. Uh, and one of the, the biggest things that uh, we remember is uh, his big brother's reaction uh, when we brought him to the house. And I just remember coming out of the van and walking towards the house and just walking in and, and he just immediately starts giggling, excited to see me, but then he's just like, what, yeah. is, what is this? What are you bringing me? <laughs> um, I, I uncovered, you know, the, the blanket off of, off of Jordan and uh, Jalen, our oldest one, uh, just looks at him and just started to be really gentle with him and, and started to kind of like touch him a little bit, rocking the, the car seat and just like, it was just such a cute, tender moment uh to watch that he was just kind of smiling and giggling um i don't think he really knew what he was looking at at all no uh but it was just such a sweet moment and he loves his brother he tries to make him laugh he plays with him you know people ask me like oh is he jealous but he's too young thankfully to even know what that is. So he just adores his brother. He begs me to hold him all the time and it is the cutest thing. He also met his grandma and his auntie, which was really nice because they're actually from California. Some of the difficulties that we had with Jordan once we brought him home was he was unable to have any bowel movements he was really constipated. We had to take him to the doctor. He didn't poop for about a week. It was really scary. We were trying to, we were starting to get really concerned. Even though he was drinking really well, it was just, we can tell there was something wrong. And the fact that he had no dirty diapers. The doctor realized that because he's a preemie, the iron multivitamin that he was on was really hard on his stomach. So we ended up stopping that and then he became more regular, thankfully. We also had to continue taking Jordan to see the nutritionist to help him continue to gain weight and to see what was working and how many vitamins he needed to keep taking. They wanted to weigh him naked as well as know exactly how much he was drinking and how often. Another thing that we experienced with Jordan was the fact that he was having these breathing issues that were extremely scary. He would be like throwing his head back, gasping for air. He never lost color though, is what I noticed, which helped me not rush him to the ER. We ended up making him a doctor appointment. And let me mind you, this could be during a feeding. This could be any time of day, in the middle of the night, um, when I was changing his diaper. It just, you would never know when it was gonna happen. So we ended up taking him to the doctor. We explained to her what was going on and she actually said it was acid reflux. Something about him trying to just get 
whatever was coming up out and it made him do that that motion so it was really scary we were extremely relieved to find out that's all it was because i was like oh no he's now he's having an issue because he's a, a preemie like a big issue and i didn't know if it was going to stay with him throughout his whole life turns out the next day he stopped doing that all together like it was pretty amazing and a huge blessing and i was I was really glad because it was a scary thing. And I think even if I knew what it was and it kept happening, I think I would still be a little nervous. Mm -hmm. Like, is it really what it was? Yeah, I thought it might have been like an issue with his lungs or something. Yeah. It wasn't fully developed, something like that. Yeah. So Jordan today, he is just an amazing little boy. I am just loving his personality. He's smiling now. He almost as ready to giggle he you know he's still slightly behind because he's a preemie but they are saying such great things about him he's like almost caught up he's still very tiny he's only 11 pounds 14 ounces but he's doing really good he's in size one diapers and he's wearing anywhere from zero to three months to just three months so he's still pretty small but on camera he looks really big <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he he loves his brother he loves to be held he loves to be talked to um he has his normal doctor appointments originally i remember asking the doctor i thought he was gonna have like a lot of special appointments because he was so small but the doctor said no he is great he i expect him to be a normal child once he plays catch up and he gets to his normal size um, like average size with the rest of the kids, which I think will be about age five, he is going to be all caught up. And we're just, we couldn't be more blessed. Too you know, blessed. Too blessed. <laughs> I'm going to say that every time. I know you are. You do it all the time. We just wanted to give thanks to the Lord and everyone who has been praying for us throughout this whole process that Danielle's here safe, the baby's here safe, and even though all, th they, all that they went through, uh, that they are still here right next to me. <laughs> well, guys, we're going to go ahead and end it there. Thank you so much for watching our story and listening to all that we endured. If you have not seen part one and part two, go ahead and do it because it's really great information. You just don't know what tomorrow holds. And God is good. So He's good. so good. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are new... Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell while you're at it, and push the like button as well so other people can view this. You just, like I said, you never know what tomorrow brings. Like, we were not expecting to have a preemie, but um, I'm really glad that we're here to share our story so that people can be aware and be safe. All right, you guys. God bless you. We love you all. Bye. Bye.